And we're back. We are wrapping up Becoming Naomi Leon. We're very much toward the end here and excited to find out what happens. Listened to some of your theories on what you think might be uh, happening towards the end here. And uh, let's see if you're right. We're starting with chapter 18, A Pride of Lions. So of course you're thinking about, well, a pride of lions is what you call a family of lions. You know what pride means in and of itself. Um, and we kind of have an idea what some of the lions of the book are, the leons, right? So put that all together and see what you can make out of this chapter. A figure stepped out of the shadows. Graham put her heart, hand on her heart. Fabiola instinctively pulled me close to her. <gasps> I mean, I wonder who it is. Like, it could be Skyla, right? Who's there? demanded Graciela. It, it is me, Santiago. Gracias a Dios, said Flora, making the sign of the cross and hurrying into the house to turn on the porch light, which flooded the yard. Graham and Fabiola reached Santiago first. Graham grabbed both of his hands and said, Santiago, we've been looking for you. He hung his head and said something that I couldn't hear. And Graham shook her head and said, no, no, don't say that. We're just happy we found you. Then she hugged him. I froze. I might as well have been back on the playground with a bunch of kids calling Owen names and me watching it all like a movie. Was this really happening? Owen ran forward. Santiago put his hands on Owen's arms. I could hear bits and pieces of Owen's nonstop jabbering. Looking and looking for you. It took a long time in Baby Beluga to Mexico and Barrio Halatlago. Santiago touched Owen's head and stroked his hair. What did that feel like? Owen wouldn't stop talking. And we came with Bernardo and Fabiola and Lulu. Ruben is my best friend. And firecrackers and candy. Naomi ran after you, thought you, you were lost. When Owen said my name, Santiago looked up. His forehead wrinkled and he ran a hand through his rumpled brown hair. He swallowed and I saw the gulp ride down his throat. He reached an arm toward me. Graciela took the bag from my hand and gently tried to push me forward. I wanted to go to him, but I felt as if I was knee deep in wet cement. I opened my mouth to say something, anything, but only tears came out. Santiago scooped Owen up with one arm and walked to me. Then he knelt down on one knee, reached out and pulled me into his arms. At first, he rocked us back and forth like people do when they're just plain happy to see a friend. But then he became still and pulled us even closer. I knew he was crying by the way his chest was sputtering up and down and by the sounds of his sniffling. I clung on tight to him and he squeezed back over and over, his arms strong and protective. When I pressed my face into his shirt, I smelled sea salt and, was I dreaming? A whiff of soap. Mis niños, mis niños, he said, burying his face in our hair. When we stood up, there wasn't a dry eye in heaven. Fabiola started talking in Spanish and introduced everyone. We all went inside and even though it was late, we crowded around the kitchen table. We look for you, said Ruben. I did not arrive until tonight, explained Santiago, reaching over and ruffling Ruben's hair. My car was not working and I had to take a bus, but the drivers are on strike, so I waited at the bus station for three days. I knew I would not ar arrive in time to carve in the festival, for that I was very sad. I almost did not come, but something, something told me I must come. It was all out of positive thinking, I said quietly. Yes, maybe, said Santiago, smiling. 
I went straight to El Zocalo to hear the announcements, and when I heard Bernardo's name, I could not believe it. I went to find him, and then, when I saw Maria and Naomi and Owen, I wondered if it could be true. My children? But I wanted to think, to prepare. So I ran. I chased you, I said. I did not know. I took a taxi to the house of Teresa. She told me you came to see her and where you were staying. Then I could not stop thinking about you. I knew I had to come. Santiago seemed shy, but maybe that was because we had all seen him crying earlier, or maybe he was just quiet, like me. I related the whole story of what happened and how we got here, with a little help from Graciela because Santiago's English wasn't what it used to be. I sat beside him and he listened and nodded with a sad, tired face. He reached down and stroked my hair. Tell us what you've been doing, said Fabiola. Santiago shrugged his shoulders. I have lived in Puerto Escondido for the last seven years. I have a boat and I take the tourists out to catch fish. It is a small living and the town, it is becoming more popular now, especially to the surfers. I don't make the big money like I made in the United States, but it is very cheap to live there. I have a little house and when I'm not working on the boat, I carve the animals. I bring them to Aunt Teresa and she paints them. They are sold in some shops. I sometimes make more money from the carvings than from the fishing. He looked at me and Owen. A tiny smile showed on his face. Do you want to know the name of my boat? It is the Soledad, after my children. Soledad is the saint, right? I said, that's right. You were named for Nuestra Señora de la Soledad, but my boat was named for you. Isn't that sweet? Oh my God, that's so sweet. Santiago, there are some things I'd like to talk to you about. Maybe tomorrow? We need some help, said Graham. He sat forward, leaning his elbows on his knees and resting his chin on his folded hands, looking at me and then Owen. He said to Graham, I have thought of nothing else for years. I looked around at everyone sitting in Flora's kitchen and I felt as if I were in a movie again in a scene that was crystal clear in the middle and soft and blurry around the edges. I didn't want it to end. I only wanted it to be right here, right now. I wanted to remember everything about this night. Lots of things for this kid, reminder of a movie, I don't know. Graciela took Owen and Ruben to get ready for bed and the late hour soon settled on everyone. Santiago stood up to leave. Wait, I said, reaching for the bag on the table and bringing out the lion. I handed it to Santiago, for you. Santiago looked at the lion, but a sadness overtook his face. He shook his head back and forth. It is the first year that a leon did not carve in the contest. Fabiola smiled, but you are wrong. A leon did carve in the contest. Naomi. She did this. Puzzled, Santiago looked at me, then at the lion. He examined it carefully, turning it around and touching the nicks and the cuts. It is fantastico. Even after I was in baby beluga and snug in my bed, I could still see the pride in my father's eyes when he admired the lion. The occasional pop of a firecracker kept me awake to revel in my thoughts. I was in my own bed. Graham and Owen were here with me. Everything was the same. Well, almost everything. Reuben was sleeping inside Baby Beluga too. We were now in Mexico. I had found my father and a waterfall of happiness had drowned my nagging worries, at least for now. First thing in the morning, I would make fantastico number one on my superb Spanish words list. So beautiful. So hopefully you figured out how that title worked in.
Pride of Lions and have some thoughts on that. And we will continue with chapter 19, A Cry of Hounds. Mm. Hmm, that does not sound. Oh, I like hounds. Yes, but a cry of hounds. That, that does not sound is. promising. We found dad, but name for a um, collection of, of dogs, a cry. A cry. That's a kind of cry, they howl. Yeah. My people used to howl. All right, guys, so we'll continue next time. See you next time. Bye.